friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad and today we're gonna be discussing something really interesting, which is how we can actually integrate MongoDB with our .NET application. We're gonna go through the installation process of MongoDB on our machine, then we're gonna be seeing how we can actually connect it to our web APIs, and then once we've done that, we can see how we can actually create a CAD operation with MongoDB. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. It will really help the channel. As well, if you'd like to support me, please consider supporting me on Patreon or buying me a coffee. Now, grab your cup of coffee and let's get started. So the first thing that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be installing MongoDB on our laptop. And since I'm using Mac, I'm gonna be utilizing Homebrew to install it and configure it. Uh, for Windows, you can actually download it and basically install the MSI. Uh, but for now, we're gonna be utilizing the Homebrew and basically we're gonna be taking it from there. So let's get started. So first things first is we need to make sure that the uh, Xcode is installed if you don't have it already. So I have already installed Xcode. I think yeah, Xcode is already installed on my machine. And once we have installed Xcode, what you need to do is you need to install Xcode dash select dash dash install. I have already did this. It says it's already installed. Okay, so I don't need to install it again. So once we have that, we need to basically install the package through Homebrew. So we do that, we do brew tab mongodb forward slash brew. And that basically will open the tab so we can actually utilize it. I have already done this before. And then basically what you need to do is put brew update, make sure that we have the latest version of everything. And then once we have, make sure that's updated to the latest version, what we can do is we can put brew install mongo dash db actually mongo db dash community and then we're going to be installing version at 6.0 and uh, as you can see here it's already installed on my machine but basically you can this is the way you install it and once we have done all of that and we have configured it we need to make sure that the actual brew service is running or basically the uh, mongodb is running through brew uh, the service of it is running through brew and to do that we're gonna put the brew services start mongodb forward slash brew forward slash mongo db dash community and i have already done this i'm not gonna restart it again but once you do it if you want to basically make sure that it's actually running as it should be what you can do is put brew service list services list and here basically you can see all of the services which are running on your machine through homebrew and here I, you can as you can see i have mongodb community running and i have postgres as well running simultaneously so that way once you do all this installation if you do uh, brew list brew services list and you see mongodb uh, dash community here and with the status started it means it's actually running as it should be on your machine and basically that's going to be the main installation process that we need to do in order for us to get started with mongodb so these are the main installation configuration that we need to take this is uh, the initial step now we just need to need to have make sure that uh, .NET is installed and once that's done we're going to basically start creating our database in mongo and basically configure it from there creating the collection and then creating our web api so we need to make sure that we are on the latest version of .NET. So if you don't have it already, so just go to .NET. If you have it already, just make sure that you are on the latest version, dash dash version. And here you can see I'm on version 7.0.101. It should work with basically any uh, modern .NET framework, but for this reason, I'm using .NET 7.0.1.1. Now, once we have made sure that .NET is there, uh, the next step for us is gonna be uh, to configure Mongo. And basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to go utilize the terminal. And once we utilize the terminal, we're going to open Mongo. We're going to be creating the database. We're going to be creating the collection. Once we create all of that and make sure it's uh, working, we're going to be getting our web API. So first of all, uh, let's check the Mongo version. So we put Mongo D dash dash version. And here you can see that I have version 6.0.3. And basically, it gives me different information. And just make sure that I am uh, I have the version that I specified in mind uh, for my MongoDB. Next, I want to connect to it. So I put Mongo sh, and this will basically open the terminal for Mongo. And basically, I can able to reach MongoDB through this. 
and this is basically like a CLI command and this is basically the command line interface that will allow me to communicate with the MongoDB server and basically let me send commands to it and uh, it will allow me to execute whatever uh, I want within the MongoDB service. So here for uh, what I need to do first is I want to create my application or basically my database and basically what uh, uh, if I want to do that what I need to do is I need to put the word use and here I want to specify my application so I'm going to be utilizing we're going to be building basically as always an F1 related application um, I'm just going to call it driver app for F1 drivers and from there we're going to be continuing so I'm just going to call drivers app And as you can see here, uh, it says switch to drivers app. And the way you know that it worked, basically you'll be able to see that the version of, or basically the name of the database now appears here instead of test. And once you'd have done that, the next step is we need to create our collection. So I'm just gonna put db dot create collection. I'm just gonna put drivers. And once we received okay uh, dot uh, sorry okay comma uh, colon one, it means that it have worked successfully and the my driver collection is created. And now, uh, if you don't know, basically uh, Mongo is a non-SQL database uh, opposite to Postgres, SQL Server, MySQL, which means that it does not have the same um, structure of a normal database with tables, connection, relationships when it comes to one to many, it's a non-SQL database. So basically the connections there is gonna be all based on the documents that we create and based on the um, uh, connections that we actually give it. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about the difference between, between a relational database and a non-SQL database, please comment in the, in the comments down below and I'll make sure to create a video explaining the main differences between them. But for now, we're not gonna be really jumping deep into what's the main differences between the two. But all we, all you need to do for this is uh, basically a collection here is gonna be where we'll be storing the data. It has the same concept of a table, but uh, it's gonna be mostly like a document file where we everything is gonna be stored in a JSON format uh, of some sort. So. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding some information uh, to our collection here and I'm basically going to be adding some drivers and I'm just going to put db.drivers.insertMany I'm going to add multiple ones and the way we do it is going to be through an array and first the first item is going to be like because uh, basically it's a JSON format so I can make it the way I want I'm going to call it name I'm going to put the driver's name put Lewis Hamilton and then I'm gonna give the driver's number so number I'm gonna hit put it 44 and then I'm gonna put the team and it's gonna be as always Mercedes dash AMG Petronas and basically that's the first uh, record that I want to insert here oh I forgot to add this Okay, let's do this right now. Da, da, da. Forgot to add the curly braces. Okay, let's add them here. Okay. So that's the first driver. Now let me add uh, another driver, which is going to be George. And again, we need to have the curly braces. We're going to put the name. It's going to be George Russell and comma number it's gonna be 63 and then I'm gonna put oops I don't want it as a string I want it as an integer and then lastly I want to put the team and it's gonna be the same team which is gonna be Mercedes dash AMG Petronas okay and now once I close the a bracket all I need to do right now is just close this and put a uh, close the brackets as well and hit enter and now we can see that I got an acknowledgement which means that they have been inserted and as you can see here random IDs 
that has been generated for me and these are object IDs which stand for the basically the JSON object that has been created and uh, the, the way that I can actually make sure that it has been created uh, once I get this confirmation message it will allow me to see that it has been created successfully another way I can basically retrieve those information back right now from my collection to see if they actually exist or not so in order for me to do that I'm going to put db dot drivers dot find and we'll make it pretty and as you can see here that uh, I got the list of the drivers that I have and the main thing here that I would like to emphasize on these are the information that we have put which is name number and team but the underscore ID which is the object ID here this has been auto generated by MongoDB for me for this collection and as we can see for every single one of these uh, objects here I have a completely different ID so it starts almost similarly the same all the way until it reaches here where basically here we can see some of the differences so here it ends with DC here it ends with DD but basically this object ID is being automatically created for me by Mongo and I'm not controlling it uh, it's all auto generated for me and basically uh, the way it's being it's done that in order for us to make sure that we have unique identification for every single record that we add to our collection and that's really important it's basically we can think about it as a primary key when it comes to our uh, relational databases so once we have done all of that and we know that our collection is actually working the next step is we're going to be creating our application or basically web api so let's exit this if you want to exit this all you put you need to do is to dot exit and basically now we exit out of uh, the cli for mongodb so let me go back to my desktop go to work learning mongo.net mongo and now here what i'm gonna be doing is i'm gonna be creating my application so i'm gonna put dot net new web api and i'm just gonna call it uh, dash and for i'm uh, sorry i'm gonna call it drivers uh, drivers app api anything that i want so now we can see that my drivers app has been created uh, let me navigate to it drivers app and now all I need to do is just do uh, ls to see what everything there we can see that I have my controllers my program.cs so let me just do a dot net build to make sure that everything is building okay great now I'm gonna utilize rider to open my application so now that my application is open in rider I'm just gonna be doing some cleaning up so Let's see, I don't need this, so let's delete this. Anything here? No, that seems to be fine. Now let's delete stuff from the control. We don't really need this controller, so let's delete it. Okay, perfect. So now basically we have a bare bone uh, application. I'm gonna open my terminal here. Let's see how it looks. Looks good. So let's do dot .NET build again just to make sure that everything is building after we have deleted all of the stuff okay great so now that we have done all of that now we have our application created a bare bone application but it's there our uh, mongodb collection is there and our drivers is there so what we need to do right now is uh, we need to basically map uh, the collection that we have created which is the driver collection into our uh, uh, into our web api but before we do that we need to install a package in order for uh, basically our application to recognize that we have MongoDB and we're going to be connecting to MongoDB so the first thing and then we're going to be creating our model we're going to be adding some attributes to some of the fields for our model to make sure that it's mapped one to one to whatever we have inside our MongoDB database and once that is done we're going to be basically creating our connection and from once we're creating our connection we can add the co co connection strings and basically create our services so on and so forth so as we said first thing what we need to do is we need to uh, add a package and that package we're gonna put dot .NET add package mongo db dot driver and this should take a few seconds and to verify it has been installed successfully we just put go to edit and say as proj and we can see here that mongo db dot driver has been installed successfully great 
So the next step is, as we said, we need to create a new folder. So add new directory. And I'm just gonna call it models. And here what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna add a class. And I'm gonna call this class driver. It's gonna be mapping one-to-one -to, -one to whatever we have inside our database. And here what I need to do is, first of all, if we go back to my terminal, and if we take a look, uh, let's go up, up, up. And if I take a look at the drivers that I have, sorry, at the objects that I have, I have an ID, which I need to create, a name, a number, and a team. So this one, uh, we need to actually map it to an object ID. So um, Mongo will able to recognize it when we do the communication. The name, we're gonna give it like a driver name so we can see how we can map different uh, attribute from our um, uh, model into the database itself by utilizing attributes and the rest we're gonna keep it the same. So first things first, uh, we need to make sure that we add something called the Boson ID. And basically Boson ID here, it means that if we take a look what it's using, it's using the mongodb.boson.serialization.attribute, which basically means that it's gonna be referring to the object ID that we're gonna be creating. And now that once that is done, we're gonna put Boson. I'm not sure if I'm spelling that correctly, but it is what it is. We're gonna say representation. And then here I'm gonna put the Boson type and it's gonna be of type object ID. Where is object ID? Object ID. And that means that we're actually, we could, we're identifying it as an ID. And then once we identified ID, we're telling it what type of ID we want it. And basically we want it as an object ID. So now we need to actually make it as a, a string and we name it as ID. And let's make this as nullable. So that's gonna be the first thing. Second is, as if we take a look again, we're gonna have name. So what we can do is if we put the prop and we make it a string and we make it as name. So that's gonna be one-to-one -one mapping, but let's say if we have a property, again, this is all we're doing for explanation purposes, just to make sure that if you have different types of integration, how it will work. If you have different types of uh, models name, you don't wanna change it. Let's see how that will work. But again, you can just name it the same if you want. So. Let's say here I want I have a driver's name and in my database I have a name. So how do I map it one to one? It's very easy. So all I need to do is add an attribute and I put a person element and here I just give it the same element name. I'm just gonna put it name. And basically what that will do is it will gonna map whatever the object that I have here. So excuse me, or whatever I have here with the uh, object that I have inside my database for the name. So here in my database, in my collection, it's going to be name, but in my C sharp model, it's going to be driver's name. And the Boston element here will be allowing me to actually uh, do the mapping to it. And lastly, what I'm going to have is just the number. So prop int, this is going to be the driver's number. And lastly, the team prop string team. Sim very simple. Uh, so as well, I can do it something like that, just to make sure that the initialization is null. Okay, great. So once I've done all of that, I can just do that .NET build. As you can tell, I like to do always that .NET build to make sure everything is building successfully. Perfect build succeeded, we did not receive anything. And now the next step for us is now that we have created our model, the next thing is we need to tell our web API is where can it find the connection string or how can it actually connect to our MongoDB. For this, we need to add a connection string to our app settings. So let's go to our app settings. And here what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna add a new item. I'm gonna put the Mongo database. And here we're gonna first put the connection string. And we're gonna be connecting to Mongo TV colon forward slash forward slash localhost colon 27017. And this is the default port that Mongo utilize. And then we're gonna specify the database name. And let me see what did we call it. This is database drivers app. So let's copy this. And lastly, 
the collections name which is going to be drivers very simple straight to the point now that we have done that what we need to do right now is we need to create some kind of, some kind of a class and this class will actually map to this object inside our app settings and the reason we need this is once we actually read the information from the app settings we need to put it in an object and that object we're going to be utilizing in order for us to inject it to our services in order for us to be able to connect to um, mongodb so it's much more easier to have it within an object rather than try to do some string interpolation in order for us to pull it out directly from the app settings so in order for us to do that uh, what we need to do is inside our uh, root directory we're going to be creating a new folder and we go to directory and we're going to call this configurations and here we're going to be creating a new class and we're going to put database settings and it's going to have this basically the same structure of what you have here we're going to have connection string database name and collection name so prop string oops connection strings and it's going to be equal to null and the other one is going to be database it's going to be also equal to null and lastly we're going to put the collection name, oops, string. Okay. So let's see here. We have collection name. Perfect. Actually, let's just do this just to make sure. I do a lot of typos and uh, the last thing is I want to have a typo see here database is called database name good call and lastly connection string connection string okay great so once we have done all of that the next step for us is basically going to be uh, adding this information to our app settings and try to actually do the configuration from there so what we can do here is we need to go to program.cs not app settings excuse me and then what we can do is we can just inject it so we can put builder dot services dot configure and here we're going to say we're going to be configuring the database settings and here what we're going to be doing is we're just going to go to builder dot configuration dot get section and we're going to oops get section and we're going to give it the same section that we currently created for it which is going to be ta -ta -ta, mongo database and what will that do so basically uh, what we're doing here is we're taking this uh, information that we have inside our app settings and we are creating an i want to say as a uh, service inside our di container which basically going to contain all of the information that we have inside this uh, app settings so whenever we are utilizing the db settings all of this information is going to be available for us perfect so the next step is we're going to be creating the service which is going to be responsible for doing the crud operation against our database so if we're thinking about it as an ef core if i'm utilizing for example unit of work so here for example we'll be creating the unit of work the repository that we're going to be utilizing in order for us to do the add, delete, update, insert, uh, sorry, uh, add, delete, update, uh, get one and get all. Uh, so uh, in MongoDB, we're going to be utilizing a service. We can, there's different uh, patterns that we can actually utilize in order for us to uh, get there. But uh, for the simplicity's sake, we're going to be just creating a simple service here, which you can actually inject inside our DI container, so we can actually refer to it from within our controller. But again, there's different patterns that we can actually utilize with MongoDB, and this I find the simplest one to actually get started with it and actually start to learn how to implement. So, inside our root directory, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding a new, uh, uh, create a new folder. I'm going to call it services. 
and here I'm just going to be creating a new class and I'm going to call the driver service so the first thing that I want to do is I want to refer back to the database settings that I have so or yeah, let's refer back to the uh, collections or the driving that I have so we're going to put private read only I Mongo collection and here I'm going to say the collection is going to be for the driver and we're just going to call it the driver collection and in essence if we can think about it one second let me fix those uh, references we can think here about the driver collection or uh, what we are referring to if we're utilizing entity framework as the um, object or basically as the uh, within the db context when you're referring to the table similarly here to the db collection is we're referring to the actual collection inside our database which is going to be for example the table so how do we initialize this it's going to be through our constructor so we can actually inject uh, whatever we need to inject there so when you need to inject the client for our mongodb we're going to be seeing how we can actually initialize it so first of all i need to create the constructor and i need to inject certain stuff into my constructor which is first going to be i options and here i want to inject the db settings so the database settings that i have and i'm just going to call it database settings and this is going to be utilizing the di container in order for it to be inject which is great so then i need to create a mongo client which is going to be referred to uh, going to be responsible for connecting my application with mongodb so i'm going to call it mongo client it's going to be equal to new mongo client and here what's uh, mongo client going to be utilizing is going to utilize some of the configuration that i have within my database settings so i'm going to put database settings dot connection strings actually dot value dot connection string so that's going to be the first thing then once i have my mongo client i need to create connect to my mongodb and basically i'm going to put mongo client get database and here basically what it needs for me is the database name so i'm just going to put database settings dot value the database name and here what I have right now is I was able to create a Mongo client. I was able to connect uh, to my database and get my database back. And now I want to get my collection, which I need to save it into my driver's collection. Equal MongoDB dot get collection. And I want to make it sure it's a driver collection here. And as always, database settings dot value dot collections name and how I have my driver's collection initiated. So let's do a quick recap of what happened here. So first things first, in order for me to get my collection or to be able to connect, there's gonna be a three step, creating a client, connect to the database, and then pull the connection. For that, MongoDB provides us with a client uh, that I can actually utilize. Then I can utilize this client to connect to the specific database. If I have different databases, I can connect to any databases that I want. And uh, the last one is basically, once I have that database, I'm able to connect to that collection. And all of that is utilizing the NuGet package that I've installed for uh, MongoDB. I did not have to do any of the work manually. The package took care of everything for me. But these are the steps that's needed that uh, uh, that I need to follow in order for me to get this connection. And as you can see here, I have also utilized the uh, database configuration that I have injected into my application because it has basically able to pull all of the information that I need from the app settings and inject it to me here so I can utilize it. So. Once that is done, the next step is I want to start creating my five CRUD operations that I have. And they're going to be pretty simple. Uh, they're not going to be really that complicated. So let's go here. So first things first, we're going to put public, async, and it's going to be a task. And it's going to return a list of driver. And we're just going to call it get async. It's going to give us everything. And we're just going to put await underscore driver collection dot find dot find async and actually let's make it dot find and let's utilize lambda actually underscore and we're just gonna make it true we're just basically getting everything and we'll just make it to list async 
Yes, to list async. So that's the first one. Uh, the second one is we're gonna put public. We're gonna basically get a single one. So get async is gonna be a task of driver. Um, we're gonna put get async again, but the main difference here is gonna take a string of an ID. And this here, oops, not if an ID. Uh, we're gonna put the same thing. We're gonna put await underscore driver collection dot find. And here we're gonna be utilizing the lambda function to get it. So here we're gonna put, um, we're gonna put x, x dot id. It's gonna be equal equal id dot first or default async. Perfect. Now we have two out of the five. Now let's continue with this. The next one is gonna be, I think, the add. So let's do that. So public uh, async. Uh, we're gonna return just a task. Uh, we're just gonna call it create async. And it's gonna take a driver. We call it called driver. And uh, we're gonna be utilizing await underscore driver collection dot insert one async. Uh, we're just gonna pass the driver here. Then we're gonna put public again. Let's do the update now. Async task update async. We're also gonna take a driver and driver. We're gonna equal uh, lambda await underscore driver collection dot update one async. And here it's gonna take first the ID. Uh, we need to map it to which one it is. Dot ID equal equal a driver dot ID. And then I need to basically pass the object itself, which is gonna be driver. So basically here what we are telling it is, uh, it's gonna be, sorry, replace one async, yeah. So what we're doing here is we're actually telling it that you yeah, go find me the ID, uh, find me the object that match with this ID. And once you find it, just replace whatever information you have there with the driver. So uh, we're not actually replacing single entities. We're basically doing a full replace of whatever information we have there. So we're not actually replacing one by one. So if I only change the name, I'm only replacing the name, I'm replacing the entire object. So that's it, that is here. And lastly, we need to basically do the delete public async task, remove async. And we're only gonna take an ID here. And again, we're gonna utilize await underscore drive, driver collection dot delete one async. And we're gonna just map it on the ID. That's it. As simple as that. Again, let's do dot not build. Make sure everything is building. Build succeeded. Now, if I debug, it's not gonna work. Just it's a good just to make sure that it's running. It's building and running, not only building. Okay, perfect. I can see that I have my local host initiated. That's exactly what I need. And let's close this again. Let me just check if the screen is still right. Okay, great. So once I have done all of that, the next step for me is I want to, uh, first of all, inject this service into my uh, program.cs to make sure it's available for me inside my DI container, dependency injection. And once, that I, once I have done that, the next step is I'm gonna create a simple controller which is gonna be taking advantage of these services and to be, to be actually interacting with my MongoDB. So now that I have this running, let's go back to my program.cs. And all I'm gonna be doing here is injecting that server. So it's gonna be builder.services.add singleton. And here I'm just gonna name the service name, which is gonna be the driver service. Driver service, that's it. And oh, that's all I'm gonna be doing. Oops, let's save this. Now inside my controllers, all I'm gonna be doing here is add a new controller. And I'm gonna call this surprise, 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 drivers controller. And here, basically, I'm gonna just inherit from base, controller base. It's the first thing I'm gonna be doing. Second, I'm gonna add some attributes. So I'm just make sure this is an API controller. And then I wanna specify the route for it. 
and here all I'm going to be saying is it's going to be API forward slash whatever the controller name is very simple straight to the point now that I have done this let me remove this I don't need this right now the next step is I want to basically uh, uh, initialize my service so I'm going to put private read only driver service underscore driver service and then I'm going to create my constructor. So I'm going to put public uh, drivers controllers. Driver controllers. It's going to take the driver service. Driver service. And I'm just going to put underscore driver service equal driver service. So here, basically, I'm doing single initialization. Another way I can do this for the constructor is I can do it something like this. It's the same thing, to be fair. It's just like I feel I feel it looks a bit nicer if it's all a single line, if I don't have multiple uh, servers I need to initialize. But basically, this is the same thing as this. Instead of having a brackets, I, ju uh, I just utilize a lambda expression in order for me to initialize it. Exactly the same thing. So once I have done that, now it's time for me to actually create my uh, uh, my create my endpoints. And here I'm going to be having five endpoints: get by ID, basically get get all, add, update, and delete. And here something that we need to pay attention to uh, is specifically when I'm sending some stuff, I need to uh, I need to specify the information specifically for the ID in order for me to do some validation on that once I'm receiving it. It's just something that we need to keep in mind when whenever we're doing this uh, call, because as we saw previously, uh, when we actually uh, created this model, it has a boson type of an object ID, and that has a certain number of characters that we need to respect. So that's why we're going to be updating our um, we're going to be updating our uh, uh, route here, or basically action, in order for us to make sure respect those uh, IDs that we're going to be coming in. So first things first, we're going to put HTTP GET, and here I'm just going to say that this is going to be expecting an ID. So this we already know. But here I'm just going to say the length for it, it's going to be 24. So it will match with the buzzin ID that we have created. And once I do this, basically I'm going to put public async task i action result. And then here all I'm going to be able to get driver, actually just get. And I'm just going to utilize a string ID here. And now once I have done that, I'm going to utilize the service. So I'm going to put far existing driver equal await underscore driver service dot get async and I'm just going to pass the ID and if driver server dri sorry existing driver is null I'm going to basically return not found return return not found Else, I'm going to just return the existing driver as is. Uh, why is not happening? Return. OK, excuse me. The existing driver. OK, so this is the first one. Uh, let us test it out. So let's run it. Let me open my web browser. What this is is being initiated. Where is my web browser? Okay. Oh, we have an issue. What is it? Let's make this a bit bigger so we can see the problem that showed up. There is an incomplete parameter in our root template. Check for the matching root template. Okay. Let's go back to my controller. Oh, I forgot to add this at the end. See, I, I do a lot of typos specifically in the morning. So let's see this. Okay, it works. So now let me open this inside my web browser. Let me get here. Um, just let me put it here like this. And let's zoom in. I think that should be fine. Let's see how it looks. Yep, a bit more. Okay. 
Okay, so what we can do here right now, uh, try it out. I'm just gonna get an ID from my uh, from my terminal, which is gonna be this ID here, which is gonna be for Lewis. Let's see if this will work. And now let's click execute. And what did I get? I got a 200. I got the ID, I got the driver's name, I got the number, and I got the team. Okay, perfect. So now we make sure that our first endpoint is working. We, we made sure that we are respecting the Boston ID that we need. And now let's create the rest of them. So the second one is, let's go back to my uh, rider here. And let's come here. And the first thing that I'm going to be doing here, I'm going to basically get all. So again, it's going to be HTTP post. Oh, yeah, let's HTTP get again. HTTP get uh, public async task i action result I'll just put post oh, sorry get still early morning uh, var all drivers equal await underscore driver service dot get async uh, i'm just gonna say if all drivers dot any it, if it does exist i'm gonna return okay with all drivers else if not i'm just gonna return not found uh, just simple we can create we can return it empty we can uh, return whatever we want just a simple thing let's try it out da, da, da. let's go back to my web browser let's refresh this let's try this one here Right out, execute. Now I should be able to see two drivers. And as you can see, I have Lewis and I have George available here. Perfect. Let's go back to my rider. Next step is I want to create a post. So the post is going to be as well pretty straightforward. I'm going to put HTTP post, public, async, task, I action result, post. And it's going to take a driver. Now let's add those references. Perfect. Let's make this smaller. Okay. Now here, what I'm going to be doing is, it's pretty straightforward. All I'm going to be adding is this. I'm going to put await. Driver service. Dot create async. I'm going to pass the driver and that's it. Or I'm going to put returned, created at action. Oops. And here I'm just going to pass the name of cat because basically this is what we're going to be doing. And then I'm going to put a new ID equal the driver.id. And then I need to pass the object itself. Basically similar to what we do whenever a new uh, uh, new a new user has been created or a new object has been created i'm just going to be turning the driver here and that's it perfect so once i have done all of that now let's do the put and then we'll do the post and that should be it and then we can test it all so http put it's going to take the same thing as this one so let's go just copy paste it because we're going to be utilizing the ID to verify it. And here what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to put public uh, async. Let me just make more space so it will look better. Okay, public async task. I action result. I'm going to call it update. We're going to take a string as an ID and a driver. Oops. Driver. And first of all, we need to make sure that it exists, not parallel, that it exists. And we're going to do the same thing. So var existing driver equal await underscore driver service dot get async. And we're just going to pass the ID. If existing driver is null, return not found. Or bad request because we're basically trying to do a put. Else, what we can do is we can put driver dot actually 
driver yeah dot id equal existing driver dot id because basically here if you remember we're doing a for replace and then all i need to do is await underscore driver collection dot uh, update async and i'm just gonna pass the id itself and i'm gonna pass the driver and that's it let's see passing the id or i'm passing the driver no, let's see in the service. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, no need to send the ID here, so we'll just send the driver. Okay. And lastly, I'm just going to return node content. Perfect. And lastly, let's do the delete, which is the easiest one. HTTP delete public async task i action result delete just gonna take string id let's copy this because we also need to respect the parameter so here just gonna do it like this okay and basically what i can do is similar to this let's copy this because we also need to make sure that this ID is valid. Sort of rewriting it again. And lastly, I'm going to put await underscore driver service dot delete. Actually, what it was, did I call it? Remove async. And I'm going to pass the ID. And surprise, surprise, return no content. Okay. So what we've done here is we basically created a put and we created the delete. Similarly, both we need to respect here the ID length, which is going to be, as we said, the bolts in 24. And once we have done all of that, uh, we basically, first of all, we need to make sure that this driver exists. So we are actually, we are actually getting the driver based on their ID. If the driver does not exist, we're returning a bad request. Uh, if it does exist, we're continuing. For the update, what we're doing here is we're actually replacing the uh, ID uh, that uh, comes with the new object with the ID that exists for us uh, because basically that uh, object that we are sending does not have any ID so what we need to take we need to take the existing ID and put it there because when we're doing a replace we need to have a unique ID for it and we need to make sure that's the same thing so that's why we're doing this ID replacement and then we're basically uh, updating it as for the delete we're just taking the ID as is and we're deleting the object so let's do let's check it here uh, as we saw here, for the put, we're respecting the ID length of 24. We check the existing driver. If it does not exist, we're returning a bad request. We're, uh, because this one does not have an ID, we're just adding the existing driver ID to it, and then we're just updating it. And once that's completed, we're returning a no content. And lastly, once we're doing the delete, it's going to be the same aspect. We're just getting the ID here, respecting the length of 24. And then we're just making sure that it exists. If it does not exist, we're returning a bad request. If it does exist, we're removing it and then returning not found. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, let us just do a dot not build. Let's check this here. Okay, let's check this one. Okay, this looks good. Now let's run it and let's open our web browser. Okay, let's refresh. Now we can see here that I have my five endpoints. So we already did this, but let's try it all again. Uh, let me get it from here. So this is the ID that I want. And here I got Lewis. Perfect. The second one is going to be put. So let's try it out. So this is the ID that I want. This is the ID. So uh, let's put the driver's name hmm. let's put Lewis Hamilton driver number 44 and instead of saying only Mercedes 1 AMG Petronas I'm gonna put F1 team just add to it F1 team now let's execute this I got a 204 and right now if I just do another get by ID I got it updated with the information, which is perfect. So now my I am I get by ID, and uh, my put is actually working correctly. 
let's check the delete, I don't want to delete right now, I want to add an extra driver then delete it. Now let's see, get all of the drivers, execute, all of the drivers are here, perfect. Now let's post a new driver, I'm sure everyone knows, Mick Schumacher has joined the team, so we need to, uh, uh, let's add him as a reserve driver. So let's remove the ID here, it should automatically be created for us, and Mick Schumacher, I'm not sure how do you spell Schumacher, let's see. Uh, make sure maker okay let's take so we don't uh, spell the, the name wrong make sure maker what's the driver's number for make uh, 47 so let's put number 47 and he's have joined Mercedes dash AMG Petronas F1 team and now let's create this execute we got a 201 and now if I put get all which is this one I should be able to see now I have three drivers I have Lewis George and Mick and now if I want to delete a driver let's delete uh, Mick from the equation so let's come here and let's go to the delete which is here and let's try it out delete execute it says not found I wonder why now let's go let's connect here let's go let's connect back to our uh, uh, to our MongoDB, so I'm just going to use Mongo SH. And as you can see here, Mongo SH directly connected to me, to my, uh, uh, to my terminal for MongoDB. And if you remember, we need to do use, what did we call the database? Let's check the database name that we have given it, drivers up. Oops. Let's put a space. Okay, perfect. Now I just need to get the collection db uh, dot drivers dot find, and let's make it pretty. And uh, here we only have two. Oh, maybe it got deleted, but we're sending the wrong thing. Okay, let me try one more thing. So let's go back to ride uh, to our web browser. I think I know the issue. And let's add make again. We got a 201. Right now, if I come here, I can see make has been added. So that should be fine. But now I have, I have an issue with my code. And this is it. I'm returning not found. Also, I should return no content. Typos in the morning. So now if I just refresh this. Okay, perfect. Let me go to my web browser. And here, all I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be doing another delete. And instead of receiving not found, I should be able to receive no content. So uh, let's get the ID for Mick. And two, two, two. where is the delete here? Let's delete this and the execute. And we got a respond header of not found, uh, sorry, no content, which is exactly what we wanted. So let's do a quick summary of what we have accomplished so far and what we have done uh, um, in this video. So first of all, what we did is we have installed MongoDB on our machine. Then once we have installed it, we, had, uh, we created our database, we created our collection, and then we inputted some information there. Once that is done, we have created our web API. Once we created our web API, we have added the right uh, packages that we needed. Once we created those packages and make sure everything is running, we basically created our model. We made sure that we are respecting the MongoDB uh, attributes by adding the boson ID as an object ID to make sure that we are actually mapping one to one to our object, uh, to our ID that MongoDB automatically generate for our uh, information there. 
Once that has been done, we basically created, created our connection string, we injected it, then we created our service, we injected it as well, and then we created our controller and we utilized our service. So this video was a very quick introduction about MongoDB and how you can actually utilize it within your .NET application. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments down below. Please like, share, and subscribe if you find this video helpful. Uh, as well, if you'd like to support me, please consider supporting me on Patreon or buying me a coffee. Uh, and this is, this is the first video of the year, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions of any topics that you want me to cover, please also put them in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, let's hope this year is going to be a great year and uh, wishing you all the best. And thank you very much for watching and have a great day.